Hi, Joe Alden, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the award-winning survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, and the best-selling books, The Survival Medicine Handbook, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, and Alton's Pandemic Preparedness Guide. If society is sent to the brink by a long-term disaster, eventually the modern medical infrastructure is going to give out, leaving you as the highest medical asset left to your family. It's important to have some knowledge, training, and supplies to be effective in the role of survival medic. Some mishaps off the grid cause open wounds. Although many of these will be dirty and might not be candidates for closure, some might. Therefore, it's important to know how to suture and how to use other wound closure methods. There are many videos on the subject on YouTube, including my own. Just about all of these start with the surgeon ready to stick a needle in the patient. Well, that's great, but what goes on before that? The typical surgeon may not even know for sure because everything is set up by OR nurses, surgical assistants, and other personnel. There's a lot that goes into getting things ready before you begin stitching. In this video, Nurse Amy will give you an idea of how to put together what we call a sterile field so that your patient has the best chance to avoid contamination and infection. There are variations to the procedure you're about to witness, but this is a great way to get started when it's just you, your patient, the package that holds the laceration tray, and a few random supplies. It's not as sterile as your local operating room with a full surgical team, but it'll give your patient the best shot of avoiding infection when a disaster throws you off the grid. Here's Nurse Amy. Hi, Amy Alton here, also known as Nurse Amy, and I'm here to show you today how to open up a sterile field using a laceration tray. So first of all, I want to show you the pre-suturing stuff, so it takes a few minutes to get set up before you just immediately start in with suturing. Want to make sure you have all your equipment, so of course you're going to need a laceration tray or your instruments that you've sterilized to the best of your ability off-grid or wherever you might be during the disaster. You want to make sure that you have some suture material. Uh, these are usually single packaged and they are sterile inside and I'll show you how to get that on the sterile field without contaminating it, which is really important for all of these things. Another handy thing to have is sterile gloves. Now these that I have here are actually nitrile gloves and I keep them in an extra large because you don't know the size of the person who's going to be wearing them. And even if you have smaller hands, it's okay to wear them a little bit loose. However, it's very uncomfortable and possibly maybe impossible if someone has super large hands and they try to put them in say a medium or a small glove. So um, I just like to keep the extra large just in case we don't know who is suturing. So those are the nitrile non-allergenic gloves. Now for the prep, there's a few things you want to have. You want to have some form of an antiseptic. Now it could be betadine, it could be hippocleans, it could be a number of things, whatever you happen to have. Uh, what we have here today is povidone iodine, and that's a 10% solution, and it gives you 1% available iodine. Same thing goes for the prep wipes, same uh, actual solution. And we also have something else called a swab stick. Now there are three of them inside of here. They look like giant Q-tips and they actually have some of the povidone iodine solution inside this sterile packet. So that's kind of handy because you're just gonna be able to open that up and with your non-sterile gloves, you'll be prepping the patient. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Let's go ahead and get started with opening up our sterile field now that I showed you the equipment you need. There's a area usually on every package where there's an arrow or a place where it says to open and this actually just had a little tear section so I tore that off now inside of here is okay to touch because this is not your actual sterile field but you'll notice here we have folded packaging and there's a tab right here so what you want to do is never touch the inside of your sterile field which is your working area so I'm going to place this down I'm going to take just two fingers I pulled on that tab I'll tilt it like this pulled on that tab and then what you would do is just go away from yourself now there's another tab here you pull that and move this staying underneath to the outside. See this, we're not touching 
the inside. See the shiny parts, the outside, we're not touching the inside, which is dull. And then there's another tab here. Again, only touching the shiny part. And you're pretending that this is flat on the table, but I'm holding it up so you can see this. So we have three sides out, and then we have a final tab, which we reach underneath, and we pull that back without touching the inside of it. You can ad still adjust it like that. So what you never want to do is touch inside your sterile field. So don't do this, okay? Don't grab it on the top. Everything that I'm showing you right now is wrong. Don't lift this up and touch it. These are dirty until you put sterile gloves on. So you are not to touch the inside of this whatsoever. Ideally what you want to do is keep your sterile field to one side and your patient right next to it. So if this was my sterile field on the table, I would have my patient lay right here and be able to suture so I can reach things from the sterile field and go to the patient who's also draped with a sterile drape here. I'll show you that in a sec. Without dragging your items over areas that are non-sterile. So you really want to be sure that your suture material, which hangs down like a string, is not dragging over their pants or touching the floor or touching your arm or your clothing. So these are really important things to keep a sterile field close to the patient without contaminating things. So you would have opened this. I'm just going to move it here because normally we wouldn't have to move it, but I want to show you some other things. So also what you can do, again, the packages show you where they're going to be open. This one has a little opening on the top. You can see that folds down. It has two pieces. You have the paper backing and you have the clear front. You want to take this, pull that apart. Do not touch the inside of the package. You see what I'm doing? Now I'm not holding it way up and I'm not touching the inside of the sterile field. You want to drop this just inside the sterile field, not too high so it floats off somewhere else and not too low where you end up touching this, okay? We've just dropped it within the sterile field without touching anything. So again, pull the package open, peel it back, and let it fall. Like a paratrooper to the ground. You don't want to go too close to the ground, but you don't want to be too far up in the air. So there's that, that exact spot, maybe eight inches or so. Okay, now this is garbage, so that would be disposed of. The other thing you want to go ahead and open up is the gloves, the sterile gloves. Again, two sides, backing, front, pull it apart. This you want to drop just in the corner because you're going to have to touch this with your bare hands to get the sterile gloves on and you want to keep this in a corner, okay? We're not going to contaminate the inside, but we are going to have to touch that package a little bit. But the inside of that package is sterile, so we want to put that on the sterile field. So that's a perfect location right in the corner. All right, so we've dropped the sterile things on here. Before we start touching anything in here, we should prep our patient. In order to do that, we're going to use our antiseptics. Now, if you only have the liquid, you can pour some of this into a bowl. If you need more, that's okay. You can get more. Put that off to the side. Uh, we also could have opened this up and left it on, say, something like this that's clean, okay? We could have left it here after we opened it up. And you also want to open up some gauze. We have two by two gauzes here. Again, I'm not touching the inside there. Or we could have opened up four by four, which just means four inch by four inch. Again, opening up like this, pulling it apart without touching the inside. You see how we're not touching the inside and putting that down. Also not touching the sterile field. So then you, after you've poured everything, because the outside of this bottle could be dirty, the outside of that package could be dirty, so there's not really any sense in, in putting your nice clean gloves on until you've opened up those packages. Now, you should wash your hands or use hand sanitizer 
every step. So before we opened this, before we opened this, before I put my gloves on, um, use some hand sanitizer if that's all you have. There's really no big technique to putting on non-sterile gloves. Uh, there's a technique to taking them off. So another thing that's really handy but not absolutely necessary is an extra pair of clamps. Any kind of clamp. It doesn't matter. Curved, straight, short, taller, it doesn't matter. Um, you want to use this just because then you're not having to handle the gauze. So you can get a two by two and just kind of pinch it like that and clamp it down and then touch the bedded iron and get it wet. And then this is what we're going to use to prep the patient. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have the pig's foot to show you the technique, but we will show you the technique later. So you would use one of these, discard it. You would use a second one, prep the patient, discard that, and then use a third one, prep the patient, throw that away. So you at least three paints around where the laceration is. So that's prepping, and then again, all of this would all go away into your discarded pile. Make sure you clean those later. And then we would take our gloves off. The best way to take off gloves is to pinch one of the hands at the palm. Pull that down, okay? Now take your fingers, go on the inside of these gloves, reverse that so it's inside out. So you see this now makes like a garbage bag with the glove that was on your left hand inside and then the outside of this one is inside out. So this is what was touching your hand and since you've been using hand sanitizer this is not terribly dirty and then you would also discard that. Now we would get ready since we have painted or prepped the patient with the antiseptic we would now put on our sterile gloves. I'm going to show you how to do that. Again, we're going to touch the outside of this package, okay, but not the inside. We're going to open this up. This is like a book. It unfolds and it has two tabs, which I'm going to lift up here and show you right here. This is what you're going to open up like this. And if you're going to pull this off your sterile field, that's fine, but you can't put it back on once you take it off. So open that up. Remember, you will have washed your hands or used hand sanitizer before we're doing this. So this package was, again, folded up. like this. So we're just unfolding it, okay, staying on the outside of the package, unfolding the tabs, unfolding the tabs. Okay, now we have our sterile gloves. Now the good thing is, is the right is on the right side and the left one is on the left side. Do not touch the outer surface of the gloves. They have folded cuffs and I'm going to show you this. See this folded cuff right here? Hold the outside of that cuff. Take your right hand without touching any other part of the glove, get your fingers inside and work them around so you can feel all of the fingers before you really start putting your fingers in there. Get your thumb lined up. Remember, we're only touching this outer cuff and then start to pull it on. When the cuff begins to unroll, let go of it. Okay, we can adjust these a little later if this does stay slightly folded up. This does not touch anything but this area and the drape and where you have prepped the patient. It's the only thing this is allowed to touch once you put your gloves on. Take the other glove, same thing, put your fingers inside the cuff right here. Line your fingers up. Now remember, we're only touching the inside of the glove here. Once the glove is on, let go of it. Now you can adjust your fingers in case you've got two fingers in one hole or whatever. Okay, what we are never touching after this is anything outside the sterile drape. Now since I didn't actually touch this paper, I can touch the paper and get rid of it. But not the underside because that's dirty. Next thing we want to do, we can shift this now because my hands are sterile. This is sterile, all of this is sterile except for whatever's falling from the air. You can take the drape. Now, if this hole, which is going to go over the wound, is not big enough, over this sterile field, you have several instruments. Your suture kit might be different. We have an AdSense, which is a pickup. 
We have an iris scissors to cut the sutures ends. We have a curved Kelly and we have a needle holder. So those are the four instruments we happen to have in this. If, again, this hole, which this is called a fenestrated dra drape because it has a hole, if it's not big enough, go ahead over the sterile field and just give it a little extra cut. And make it a little bit bigger for the patient. So our laceration was a little bigger, so I went ahead and made this. So you can adjust this. Make sure this does not touch outside of your sterile area, okay? Only here can you adjust it. You have sterile gloves. This is sterile. You can adjust it. The scissors were inside here. They're sterile also. Now you want to open this up. Being careful not to touch anything else. And then what you'll do is pretend this is my patient, you will lay the drape like this. This is going to be right in the middle where the laceration is. Let's say the laceration looks like this instrument. You line it up. What you never do is touch underneath the drape. This is your sterile area. Underneath the drape where the patient is is dirty. Never touch your sterile gloves underneath there. So we have the patient draped. We have prepped the patient before. We put on our sterile gloves. We've gotten the instruments out. We've put the suture on. And I want to show you one more time. One more thing. How to get your gloves off when you're all finished. I'll tell you that now. So when we tell you again, you'll really remember it. Again, pinch the palm. Pull down. Okay? Take underneath here. Fold it inside out, and you have a little garbage can. See that? Real easy. And then that will be discarded. All right, this is Nurse Amy saying thank you for watching. We appreciate it, and please check out doomandbloom.net. See you later. Hey, if you don't have a good medical or dental kit, I know where you can find one. Just check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.